I thank you for being with us today. Uh, we're studying the second day on the parable of two debtors. The setting for this was a dinner party. It was put on by Simon, who was a Pharisee, and his other Pharisee friends. They were very strict about religious things. A woman who was a sinner came in, wept on Jesus' feet, put an ointment on them, dried them with her hair, and just was an outrage for the party. Jesus told the parable to make both Simon and his guests and people like you and me think, why don't you? Luke 7, 41, 42, Jesus said, a certain creditor had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debts for both of them. Now, which of them will love him more? As many of Jesus' parables work, he was asking for an answer from the person who heard it. And the proper answer put the person in judgment if their actions were wrong. So Simon answered, and we need to answer the same way. Well, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the greater debt. Jesus said to him, to everyone else who had responded in a like manner, you have judged rightly. So the main point of this parable is that as God has shown us forgiveness, as in the parable of the unforgiving servant, Matthew 18, or in the parable of the two debtors, if he's forgiven us, we forgive. If he's loved us, we love. Those are the key points. What we want to do now is we want to turn and think about what this parable has to say about God. God's the creditor. And as the creditor, God does something for us. He has compassion upon us. One of the hallmarks of Jesus' ministry was compassion. He talked about it, but he also lived it. He showed compassion to Levi. Levi was a tax collector. He was an outcast. You can study about tax collectors and find out how big of outcasts they are. Just like Simon had a party for Jesus, Levi had a party for Jesus. But Levi had the wrong people there. And so there's sort of a response of the religious crowd to what happened. In Luke 5.30, when the religious leaders saw Jesus eating with Levi and his friends, they complained to Jesus' close followers and said, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus' answer beautifully pictured both God's heart and his mission. He said, Those who are well have no need of a physician but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So we're going to see throughout this little lesson the compassion of God and how he uses it to change our heart. So God takes outsiders, he brings them inside for the purpose of changing their heart. He takes people who are sick in their sin, he brings them close to him so that they can be healed. The word repentance that's in there means to change your mind. The actions of God help us change our mind about him and to become different. Now, in another instance, Jesus took note of the criticism that John the Baptist and he received from the religious establishment. Let's hear what he has to say. To what then will I compare the people of this generation? And what are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace, calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not weep. Right. There are times, there are times when religious people use intellectual arguments or religious arguments to really just enhance their power in the face of a threat to their power. And they saw John the Baptist and Jesus as threats to their power, so they played games. And uh, it was really interesting because on one hand, they told people, well, John the Baptist is too strict. And on the other hand, Jesus is too loose. You can't have it both ways, but they tried. Jesus said, for John the Baptist has come eating no bread and drinking no wine. And you say, he has a demon. The son of man has come eating and drinking. And you say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. If you read the Gospel of Luke, you'll find out that both tax collectors uh, responded and sinners responded to John the Baptist and to Jesus. And in the, usually the very next verse, you'll find that the religious crowd did not. And Jesus ended this with one of my most uh, favorite verses in the Bible. After talking about, he says, nevertheless, wisdom is vindicated by all her children. Luke chapter 7, verse 35. You know what the next verse is? 
Next verse is the story of the woman who came into the dinner party of Simon and saw Jesus. He had received her. He had loved her. He had accepted her somewhere, and we don't know about this story, somewhere she had been touched by Jesus. And just like Levi had a party for him, she came to express her love to him. His wisdom was vindicated. Um, so it's not just here that it's done, but we go to the cross and we see God's wisdom again. So you hear Jesus on the cross, suspended between heaven and earth, dying for our sins, doing this, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. After the resurrection, Jesus gave the church the same message of God's saving wisdom. Luke made it clear in his writings that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. This morning while I was eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I was reading a book by one of my favorite authors, Rufus Mosley. And he talked about three stages of God's grace, and it fits perfectly with this parable and with the story. God's grace comes to us when we're outside of it. We're outsiders. We're not interested. We don't care. We're maybe even haters of God. He comes to us. That's step number one. Step number two is we receive God's grace. and We find forgiveness and we find acceptance and we find love and we find grace, just like Levi did or this woman that we've just read about. Uh, that happens to us. That's step two. Step three is God's grace becomes so real in our lives that we give it to other people. We extend it to them. The purpose of both parables that we've seen so far are to take us through this three-step nature of grace. God, our creditor, who doesn't care a thing about his money, but cares everything about our heart, forgives our sin. Now you understand I'm talking about the sin, the debt that we owe him. He gives us his grace, but he gives us his grace to make us like Jesus so that he can live through us these qualities in the world. So thanks a bunch for being a part of this today. Totally thank you for your help. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. We'll be seeing another parable. We'll be looking at Luke chapter 15. It's the parable of things that are lost. A lost coin, a lost sheep, and two lost sons. God bless you. Have a great day.